Welcome to Shark Cap Table Pro, where you keep a bigger bite of equity. We are going to do the financial tutorial known as One Low. Now, I want to go over the top portion of this model so you understand what's going on here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off headings. I have to leave the formula bar. There is some kind of a bug in Excel that doesn't uh, allow it to be taken off and be able to enter numbers. So I'm going to come up here and we're going to auto hide the ribbon. Notice we still have the bar and I want to tell you what we've got along the very top row here. This is all about printing the financials down here. This is actually a navigation bar. You can click through any one of our 14 sections and come back again. To create one of these projections, you need to press this button, which will then turn tan to let you know what phase you're in. Okay, so here we have an income line. We've done seven years. By the way, you can enter the name of your company right here, and it will percolate throughout the model. This is our low income statement. And, uh, of course, we have a series of expenses ending up with EBITDA, earnings before, interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. These two lines here could be a place to put interest expense or interest income. We have a line for the convertible debt, and here we have option cost. Uh, under the current rules, you're supposed to amortize over the length of time that you are vesting the options, you're going to amortize the estimated value at the time of the grant. So if you had a $100,000 valuation and you vested over four years, you would hit your income statement by about $25,000 each year. That's what we've attempted to do here. We're not using uh, black shoals. It's too complex. We just uh, put the worst case in at the highest value. Let's move up a little bit further here. So now we have all the options that it costs right now. We have none in there. We have a couple line items for the depreciation and amortization. We have taxable income. We have a tax adjustment. This, these you can enter plus or minus numbers along here to adjust whatever numbers here are being calculated by this percentage. Um, and right now uh, we have an after-tax income. Let's go down here a little further to the balance sheet. Uh, along these columns here, basically, we've got some entry points as well as we've got that same similar way of every line item essentially has an adjustment line item with it. So you could add or subtract uh, from these algorithms, which basically in this case is 2% or 20% of sales represents accounts receivable. We also have beginning balances. Um, so we've got inventory adjustments and an inventory. These are approximations. They're not driven by unit sales or any of the complexities that we have the ability to do in Venture Cadre. This is a, a simple model trying to get your hands around revenues, cash flow, cash in the bank, and how to make a deal that looks reasonable. So moving along here, we have long-term assets. You could put a piece of land in there or something like that. We have a depreciation calculator. Now notice that right now we have a three-year straight line. We can have any number of years, but it's always straight line. Let's leave it at three. Thank you. I'll show you why. Here we have an asset that we placed in as a three-year depreciable asset. And notice that here is the depreciation expense after one year. And... Um, our accumulated depreciation tops out at 100,000, so we completely depreciated this asset. Now watch what happens if I put $100,000 here. It starts up again. Notice it takes three years. So what we have in the code is you could put a number right here as well. And this one, even though it's in year two, starts depreciating for three years based upon this number here. We can't change the numbers of years of depreciation so that we have a mixed calculator. It's all all one type. Again, otherwise we'd have to have hundreds of these and the model would get giant and it would become very slow. Moving on along here. So here we have depreciable assets. 
We have an amortization calculator. It works the same way. Amortizable assets. And, and when we uh, press this button, you won't see these amortization or depreciation calculators. They will be hidden. Hence, that's why we have a little summary right here. So we have total assets. Now we get in, into current liabilities. We have that convertible note because it's always done in the next period, which is basically a year or less, making it a current asset or current liability, rather. And we have, um, again, some beginning balances uh, for accounts payable. And again, it's a percentage of sales. And we have some long-term liabilities. Uh, these can, again, be adjusted plus or minus by entering numbers in here. Um, let's move down here now. It gets complex in the shareholder equity because we have a lot of different kinds of securities. Uh, so we have an area here for preferred. We have an area in here for accrued preferred dividend that uh, accrues into preferred shares, and that's done every year. We've got the common stock to founders. We've got common stock sold for cash. Uh, we've got common uh, for warrants, common for convertible notes, common for convertible interest. All of these things add to shares, outstanding, common for option pool. We have retained earnings uh, reduced by the preferred stock dividend, so forth and so on. Now, if we're out of balance, I'm going to put this at zero. If we're out of balance, generally it'll always be the same number. You use this to balance the retained earnings. Uh, you put a zero, and then you come down and do it one more time. And there, you're in balance now, and the retained earnings have been adjusted. Uh, we have a little section here on financial performance metrics, current ratio, working capital, uh, net working capital ratio. These are all active, and they're all. And we have one of these for each of the three projection models. Um, and finally, we get into the uh, the cash flow statement, and um, there's nothing to enter here. Of course, it's uh, color coded so you can see if you got a negative cash flow, and then, of course it ends with a beginning and ending cash. But uh, you can take a look at all of these different things, and these are all active, and it all automatically creates a cash flow statement. So we have three of these, as I mentioned before. Now let me show you what happens when we press this button. It's um, collapsing and creating some nice reports. Now one of the things that we can do here, I'm going to actually go back here and press one, bring me back so I don't have to do any scrolling. And um, what happens here is if you see these little red lines, these are like uh, cutting points, um, I'm going to click so that they're just at the corner, right there. See right there? We're going to click right there and then we're going to come down to see the next one right there. I'm going to copy it I'm going to come over here. I'm going to open Word. This is the cut paste routine. Some people want to cut and paste these things in spurst, interspersed inside of a of a document. So I'm going to click on this. Um, we could do it vertical. Um, it makes things tiny. So I'm going to go to the um, uh, to the page layout. I'm going to set up the margins to the, be the narrow, and I'm going to do orientation, which is landscape. I'm going to control V, which is going to paste it in. And then way down on the bottom, you may not see it. There's a little window that comes up and it says control. Cl click down on that and pick and pick the one, two, three, four, the fifth little picture that shows like a picture. And bingo, that sets it up. See how nice this fits? There's a little bit of a, of a margin around there and it all fits on one page. Um, and I believe we've got the page numbers set up as well. I'll have to check that out to be sure. So that's what you could do. No, no, I'm sorry. Page numbers are not done this way. They are done when we do the, the printing. There we have printing. I'm going to show you how we print. So let's Alt-Tab and go back to our model. And now I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to print the low one. You see I've got show entry points. That's the one that goes tan. This one up here is print low entry. So we're going to print the low entry. So it's going to plug and chug, set up the print routines, and hopefully this will work. And it's coming. There we go. So here we have it all fitting very nicely on 
letter paper horizontal and here's the company name where you can go back in and put your company name uh i put a little uh, projections are subject to unintentional errors and omissions and then we have the date and the page one of four and as you can see we scrolled through this it's a beautiful formatted nice clean uh, and notice we don't have all the detail in there notice we don't have those uh, calculators for amortization and depreciation just got the main stuff that you need okay so now i'm going to exit out of this by closing this and here we are back again so that's pretty much what you do now obviously if we were going to print the mid we'd be in the mid right now we're in the low and um, you've got three of these very powerful uh, and um, you can of course cut and paste little pieces of this if you want to for example here's a good trick suppose you only wanted to show three years well you you can show three years just like that if you wanted to show five years some people don't like seven I can't figure out what you all like, so I decided to give you seven years in case you had a couple of years where nothing was happening and you just had startup expenses and no revenues. So that's pretty much it. Thanks.